Hey guys, Pete here. Today we're going to look at some of the questions that I got in the comments in my Twin Peaks Season 3 Parts 1 and 2 Recap and Review. If you haven't seen that, I'll put a link here. You can go check that out. It answers a lot of questions in and of itself. But we got some good ones, and we didn't get a lot. But in doing this, hopefully you guys will put more questions in the comments so that we can do this on a weekly basis once the show gets into that cycle. So the first and most repeated question was, Philip Gerard is not Philip Jeffries, or something like that posed as a question or you know um, yeah this was a total mistake on my part when I was looking at the credits to see if Jacques Renault was listed I saw Philip Gerard and mixed that up with Philip Jeffries probably jumped out to me because I'm used to calling Mike Philip Michael Gerard but whatever how, how I managed not to put two and two together when I saw it was Al Strobel is a mystery and it was plain and simple a mistake, so that's that. Sorry. Next question, I was completely baffled by the new arm. What in the world was that? The actor who played the arm, slash the man from another place, was supposed to reprise his role. I believe he even came in to start shooting his scenes, but then may have been difficult to work with, something along those lines. One way or another, he ended up not being involved in season three, so the character had to be reimagined. How it became a tree, we can't say for sure, but the next couple of questions are related to the arm as well, so maybe that'll help paint a picture of what's up with this character. Did anyone else notice the similarity between the new arm and the mutant baby and eraser head? <laughs> Now, when I first read this, I remember th I remember the baby looking like E.T. or a lot like E.T. From it had been a while since I'd seen a racer head, but yeah, when I went back and looked, if we compare the two, there is a definite resemblance. Twin Peaks: The Return is full of Easter eggs or callbacks to both the original run and Lynch's other work, like way too many to get into here. But if you check out the comments, people have been pointing them out left and right. So does anyone else think the being in the box could be the arms doppelganger? Actually, quite a lot of people do. In my video about the box, I mentioned that is one of the likely explanations. Now the video was about the box, not the creature, but some people have made that connection. Others are leaning towards it, the fact that it might be Laura, based largely on the fact that she flew away in front of Cooper in the Red Room. Truth is, we don't know for sure, or if it is the mother that we hear about in the Machine Room. Check out my video about the glass box for more info on that, and I will link that in the end card of this video. But either way, the head of the creature bears a definite resemblance to the evolved arm and its doppelganger. The next question was, could the creature be Laura? The short answer is yes, it could be. I don't think there's enough visual evidence here though, and I'm guessing that we'll, we'll probably get a lot more. When we talk about anything being Laura, I think it's important to keep in mind quite a few things, but I mean, first of all, we have doppelgangers. And we have no real idea what Laura is right now. I mean, we know real life Laura was killed and she slipped on the ring in an attempt to prevent Bob from taking control of her. In the real world, that's what we know. We have seen her in the Red Room, but that doesn't really explain much, especially considering in the most recent scene, she took off her face to reveal she was filled with light, and then she flew away in a way that was looked very uncomfortable, or at least she was screaming. All of that means what? I mean, yeah, Laura's, she's still a mystery. Like her status is still a total mystery at this point. So if you're saying that somebody might be Laura, what exactly does that mean? I'm sure we're gonna find out more though on that as well. Why didn't the camera catch Cooper passing through the glass box? This question has come up a couple of times on this video and a different one, and unless I miss something, I don't think we know that he didn't exactly. Now this gets into episode 3 some, but I'm going to try not to spoil everything. My understanding is that the FBI is currently investigating the murder of Sam and Tracy, which means they have all that digital, you know, all the digital images and recordings from those cameras. Tammy gave Gordon and Albert an update on the crime scene, saying that from time to time shapes move through the box, but they only show up for a few frames. So I don't think that's definitive in that it didn't catch Cooper. To me that means that something, it caught something, and it does catch something, but they can't necessarily make out what it is yet. 
Now, we saw Cooper clearly, and he kind of sort of lazily passed through the box in our eyes, but that doesn't mean that time... I mean, time is, is, is completely subjective, or I wouldn't say uh, subjective isn't the right word, but we don't really know how time was passing right then. Does that make sense? So I don't want to get too much into any more of that because that's in the next episode, but I don't think that... Bottom line is I don't think that we know that the FBI won't be able to recover or see something until, you know, we learn more about it. Was the figure in the cell the woodsman who we see in the room above the convenience store? On this, I'll just put the photos up here side by side for comparison, and you guys tell me. I mean, this is a character that comes to mind right away for a lot of people, myself included, but the character in the cell that appears to be covered in oil doesn't exactly have the beard the woodsman had, and I read someone said that he's wearing buffalo plaid, which is a lumberjack thing, but I, I can't tell personally, so I don't, know, I don't think we know for sure. It would be very interesting if this was the case, and maybe then we would even find out if the lumberjack or woodsman is the log lady's husband or not. Right now, I don't think we can say for sure, since the guy seems to be covered in oil, which turns out to be a really good way to obscure who it is. I mean, if you look, I've looked at it, zoomed in, lightened up, all these different things, and, and what you see is a black figure with their bright white eyes is, is about it. Do you think there's a connection between this series and the secret history? Absolutely. I don't think there's any question. I mean, without a doubt, what it is isn't necessarily so easy to come up and say, well, this is the connection. But I think in the end, the secret history and Frost's next book that he announced, the final dossier, those will be companions to this series. Like, I guess, you know, I'm thinking that the secret history points us towards things to think about in relation to what we're about to see in this run rather than filling in the blanks from the original run. Other words, yeah, it gives us a little bit of, of background and whatnot, but I don't think it's to make the original series more clear. I think that, you know, it, it's, it was written with this in mind. And there's a lot of controversy about things being changed and whatnot, and I don't have an answer about any of that. I've actually been working on a, a video about the secret history, but yeah, the fact that they that he mentioned that there'll be, there'll be another book that's going to come out afterwards that's going to fill in the blanks, which might have had... I mean, they said originally that the secret history would fill in the blanks, so I think that it's all connected with season three. So those are the questions I picked out from you guys. I mentioned some of my questions at the end of the recap and review. Some other ones that have popped up are, is could that possibly be Major Briggs' body that's in the room connected, or not connected, I should say disconnected from the head of Ruth Davenport? And another thing that's come to mind sort of after the fact is Hawk went to Glastonbury Grove because there was an event about to go down. He was essentially standing at the portal to the red room. And then the next time we see him, he's just chilling with Andy and Lucy looking over the evidence again. So did he see something or did anything happen or, you know, I mean, it, it's kind of weird that I haven't seen anybody really talking about it. And I don't know if I missed something, but yeah, I've been wondering about Hawk, like what is Hawk up to? And did he see anything? Did he, was he able to enter? Was he afraid to enter? Hopefully we'll find out more about that as well. Are the two people sitting in the back of the room whenever he's with Otis and Beulah Lodge Spirits? There seems to be something going on with those guys. One's small, one's big. Seems a little bit different compared to, you know, Ray and Daria, I don't think, are. And Otis doesn't appear to be. Beulah might. I mean, she's a little bit more imposing and seems to be in charge. But I think there's a possibility that th those two might be some kind of important characters. And the, the ace, the card that um, Evil Coop shows Daria before he kills her. What do you guys think about this symbol? I mean, it kind of looks like the owl glyph, you know, the, the symbol that's on the ring that we see over and over again, except it's obviously altered. So as far as video releases go, I have to get out the episode four recap and review. I will be doing a Q&A on both that and episode three or part three, whatever you want to call it. So if you have questions about either one of those episodes, put them in the comments. Unless your question in relation to episode three is why I'm so stupid and know absolutely nothing about David Lynch, because I've gotten that one already a bunch and I will address that. But yeah, if you have anything about the show, go ahead and leave it there. 
And thanks for watching. I'll talk to you soon.